It's the place with an eye-catching skyline, rich musical heritage, but also home to a hotbed of societal ills, leaving many of our at-risk children feeling hopeless. They're walking onto a war zone in some cases. In fact, in some instances, there's a war zone in their homes. Family unit was pretty much obsolete um, in the sense that there was a, a father, a mother um, that, you know, were together in a stable home. They're certainly not seeing positive role models. They don't see fathers with either lunch boxes or briefcases in their hands going off to a job. Um, we would see a lot of um, evictions and so you would see families one day and then the next day all of their things, you know, baby cribs, toys, clothes, everything they owned, you know, was on the streets. The kids are living below the poverty level, um, AIDS and crack addiction and alcoholism and prostitution. There'd be 30 kids you know, and they would just start beating on each other and without any thoughts um, harming each other, it, it really, you know, made you think that they had no concept of um, life. It's a painted picture that could be seen as bleak, even overwhelming to some, but to a few of God's faithful soldiers, a new challenge was born. Thirty-three fifty-five Poplar, the first home of what's known today as the Urban Youth Initiative. Co-founder Howard Eddings. Uh, we started with three people. Uh, we had seventy-five thousand dollars. That's and we funded three people at twenty-five thousand dollars each. We had no idea where the next seventy-five thousand dollars was going to come for the second year. I was uh, in a closet. They re they reconfigured a closet for me. That uh, was my office. A seemingly small start for a huge idea that all hatched from a concert. The scene, Life Focus 93 at the Memphis Pyramid. 100 churches combined resources for a two-day event with workshops and a concert which drew over 12,000 young people. 2,000 of those students stepped forward that night to receive Christ. UYI co-founder Larry Lloyd recalls. To receive Christ or for counseling, didn't have nearly enough volunteers. I remember I was sitting on the floor of the pyramid with 15 kids around me trying to answer their questions and, and give them the plan of salvation. But when the music finally stopped, what was next for these newly saved souls? So that really was the idea. It was a, really a failure, a failure that led to the vision of, okay, well, we can't leave these kids go to the pyramid and then leave them out there hanging. The churches couldn't help because they had no one on staff to reach the children. If they did find someone, how would they pay for the salary? And even with the budget, how would they train them? UYI immediately started raising money to fill the void. How do you start finding funding? Uh, well, you start with one person, and you start with that that um, one person or entity that already gets excited about your kind of leadership, your vision, your passion for the work that you're doing. That work involved training church workers to disciple the young people by simply reaching them where they are. It worked. It was a, it was a simple. It was a, a a simple formula, and the simple formula was that you earn the right to be heard. It's not about asking a kid to come to a church building. It's about a person stepping into their building. In the early years, that message was passed through several youth workers, two executive directors, and an ever-growing staff. The heartbeat of UYI is its army of workers, each undergo three intense years of training, and some receive tough training on the streets long before the classroom. Five days prior to graduation, I was getting ready to set up a drug deal, and the guys that I was setting a drug deal with was um, working with the feds, and so I was incarcerated again five days prior to graduation. By God's grace, Myron Thomas was given a second chance after college, and now he's using that chance to spread God's word and train UYI workers. Things we were exposed to, I didn't know that I was actually going to be practicing that, and now not only practicing it, but also teaching uh, class. They brought us in, and they empowered us to do what God, the gifts that God has given us, 
they nurtured those gifts and helped to raise us up so we can help raise up other children. I'm just amazed, uh, number one, that a place like UII exists. Since 1993, over 240 youth workers have been trained through the program. Those workers now operate in 45 centers throughout Memphis. Each one has a different past or experience that can assist the other in bringing more lives to Christ. You meet children with different, with different issues, different backgrounds. Uh, things that I mean, I haven't experienced, but Mike have, and I meet a lot of boys, and a lot of things I can't teach boys. But I might can say, Norman, I need you to come talk to my boy about this. Uh, Mike, can you do this? And, you know, because I don't have that experience. For many UII workers, their colleagues have become like family, and like any family should, they cover the kids. Family is important. Love is important. If we don't teach anything else. We got to teach that family is important. God ordained the family. But a family can come in many forms. Through the training, they learn to deal with the various home situations our city's children are facing. Remember Myron Thomas? His biological family is composed of a single mother and brothers with criminal past. But now he's on fire for his father, Jesus Christ, by helping UYI continue to train an army of leaders. John Maxwell says to to train or to develop a, a follower, you just add, but to train a leader, then you multiply. The streets of Memphis, that's where UYI workers build the relationships and minister to the children. Me being raised in Orange Mound, it was an easy fit for me to come back because I understood the lingo, I understood the talk, I knew the conversations, I knew the struggles. And we know what it feels like to hurt. We know what it feels like to be without a father. We know what it feels like to be poor and have our stomachs wrinkled from being hungry. We know what all it feels like. Who better uh, uh, to reach young people who are in, um, uh, who are the least of, of these in our communities, who are um, in some of the same situations that these adults have come out of? Who better to go back and to snatch them out than people who've gone through it? Using their own personal stories, coupled with training, UYI workers hit the schools as tutors, community centers as mentors, and neighborhoods as friends. They go where the kids go and listen before talking. Our kids want to be heard. Uh, uh, they have a message. Uh, there are things that are going on in their lives. Carolyn Bibbs listened and heard a young boy named Denzel. When he first entered the program 11 years ago, he rarely went to school, had a low GPA, and was headed toward a life of crime. Bibbs built a relationship with Denzel, and changes came. One day, uh, Denzel came and began to see a need for, for Christ in his life. He accepted the Lord, and now he's 4.0, straight A, B student. And the thing that he said to me recently was, he said, you didn't know it, Miss Bibbs, but four years ago, I was planning uh, to take my life. I had no purpose, no direction. That's until he met Miss Carolyn. Now he's a college-bound leader boasting of a straight A record. If you go in with the idea that you can be used by God, you're not doing it in your own strength, but God will give you this supernatural wisdom. UYI gives the students a place to go and activities to be part of, like sports to teach the students teamwork, camping trips to provide them with more exposure outside of the city of Memphis, and field trips so they have a better understanding of the world around them. But more than that, they give hope to those in seemingly hopeless situations. A hope is you have to believe in something bigger than yourself, and for us, it's Jesus Christ. The tri-state area is among the poorest in the nation. 86% of Memphis children living in poverty live with single women. Charges against youth offenders have become increasingly more serious. I think as the years have progressed, we've seen a more desperate um, young person and a more violent young person. Um, and it's, it's, it's tragic to me to see that. UYI leaders know it's a race to keep the door of communication open and faith focused on saving the children. UYI estimates that they've touched the lives of at least 10% of Memphis City Schools' 110,000 students. 
That leaves another 99,000 students remaining. If God can resource and sustain us uh, to do 10%, uh, then um, my passion says uh, that we've got to reach then to that next level. We've got to reach more kids. We've got to empower more youth workers and more ministries uh, to do this important work. However, the city is changing. Problems appear to be increasingly worse for the children as crime rises with poverty levels. We gotta keep doing it. We gotta, we gotta keep going and keep going and making resources till to, to, to God come back. If we don't, as adults and as Christian adults, don't respond to kids who are in need, then we're not, in my opinion, uh, we're not uh, uh, really being faithful to God's call in our lives as Christians. To serve. After 15 years, that remains the goal of the Urban Youth Initiative. And just like years past, they are unsure how God will provide tomorrow's resources, but they are certain that He will. Confident um, in whom we serve. It's, it's that simple. Our faith is what sustains us. As the mission of UYI continues for kids, for Christ, and for the future. <laughs>